I've always said this, and I, I'm sure other people have because it's a pretty basic concept, but we move as if our money is limited and our time isn't, right? And it's backwards. Money's unlimited and your time is limited. And so if I realize time is limited, then more and more I notice that every moment that I'm doing something aimless and, and nothing that isn't fulfilling but is an old addictive thing, I'm wasting something that I can't get back, right? I'm, I'm the, the time I can't get back. I can maybe create more time by doing my highest. I do think there's a chance you actually live longer by being in your joy. I think there's a reason that so many great legendary comedians like George Burns and Bob Hope live to be like 100 because they're in their joy, you know, and they're following their heart. I mean, George Burns was on stage right before he died, you know, and... When you live in your joy, you kind of get this invincibility and, and go a lot longer. But I still think your time, I mean, I know your time is limited. And so every second you go, I'll do it tomorrow, you're acting like time's not limited, right? You're, you're living in a lie again, right? And, and every time you go, I'll follow my calling tomorrow, you're acting as if time is not limited. But then when you're cutting coupons so you can get the cheapest restaurant that you don't like and don't want to go to, but you're saving money, you're moving as if money's limited, right? And so there's a defense of the limited in the wrong place. And there's an absolute, you know, you got, I know people that have CNN on for 12 hours a day, like they wake up and it's just on, you know, or Fox News or whatever. It's just on, right? Just Here's a collection of sounds of things going on that are skewed through a corporate owned media telling you whatever we want you to know to keep you in a certain frequency. And then we've gotten to a place where many people on this planet are like many people, like probably 80% of America are like, okay, I'm, I need that going. I need to always have something. Why? Because I don't want to know who the hell I actually am. And then anyone doing this kind of work, I got to say cult because I, I need an excuse to not look at what the hell I am. And then it's just the day becomes the same day every day forever. Like the same day of the same repeating of the same shit of the same keep the external going. And some people hit a line where there's a point of no return. Like that's the way their life goes for the rest of their life. And there's a line in the movie The Matrix where they say we don't free a mind after it reaches a certain age. Because there's a point where some people and none of you are in that category because you wouldn't be here go over a line where they're too identified with the past and the trauma that like actually to go inward and do this work would almost kill them or they're too identified as that pattern. And this is why we got to stop trying to get our parents to get this stuff and just stop getting, you know, because there's a line where it's too late. It's too much trauma. They're too identified as the pattern. And so they associate any inner work as death because it would kill off the pattern, which they associate as them. They do not understand this concept that they're the now and they live in what they think is the real world. And you got to understand where people are is where they are. And some people will opt to not change for the rest of their life. And it's too scary at one point. It's just, you've ever, there's too much of your life that you, you will identify as a lie if you change. And you've, you're too identified as the character you created to transcend the trauma. And that's why we gotta just surrender where people are and not need other people to get it and still be available for the ones that really want the help and are, are open to it. Like that doesn't mean don't help anyone. But <clears throat> it's also a reason why we, we don't know who's gonna be receptive and who's not and why we need to surrender the idea that you gotta shift 10 million people or whatever because people will shift at their own pace. But we often use I gotta shift people outside of me as the excuse to not go inward. And I am, more about what I truly am than how many people I can shift. I really am. And there could be times where the numbers dwindle because I need to go inward for a while or, or whatever. I'm, I'm here to know what I am and I will sacrifice whatever I have to sacrifice to, to find what that is. And I say that because I, I wanna encourage you to remember that, 
that, that you're here to find what you are. There is a peace and a freedom and a joy that you will feel that trumps any, like, I got 10 million books sold. In fact, the day I got New York Times bestseller, the team that I was working with at the time and I were a little depressed after it. We weren't ready for it. We didn't like the final draft of the book. We weren't done. And then they just put it out. But still, we all were like, shit, it's huge. And we were like kind of sad about it. And like that, that goal of the thing that you think you want is awesome, but it's not the thing. It's what you shift internally where I don't know if you've ever had just a day where the wind is so loud and magical or you just see a tree in the wind and, and you just have this oneness experience that is so incredible. That feeling, that is so much more exciting to me than any external financial goal or it just does nothing for me anymore, that, that thing. That it's like, I got to get to this place uh, externally. I'm just telling you the joy is in what you shift internally when you, as you, what you're going for right now and what you're doing here is so much bigger than if you had a goal this year that would make you whatever, $10 million and a huge business. If that is something that moves you towards more of what you are, then it's awesome. But if it's just like, I will do this and hit this, there's all this strain and then you get the outcome and so what? It, it really is because it's about your change as a human, not your circumstantial change while you're still the same package of baggage that you don't need, right? So for me, this internal shift is the most important thing because I'm really actually healing what's stored in the body, but the world is mirroring it. The world is always mirroring it. The days I shift so much stuff, suddenly everyone around me is crying too. There's like a, an absolute tie to what I release, the external matches. Like I, I've seen it every time. I'll see a political issue that I hope gets seen in the past. Then I'll let go of it and shift me and then it suddenly gets seen. Like it's really nuts how much it follows your internal thing. And the more I do this, the more I see it as like a simulation of my shifts. And you have the same thing that imagine that the world is mirroring exactly what you do. So when you have a highest calling and you go, nah, I'll wait, you'll, you'll push it away and life will go, okay, the mirror to that is you need to stay in fear and you need to have fearful things happen. And, you, and you'll, you'll be holding on to, I have to. And so the world will mirror that. It'll become more stressful. You'll suddenly see that stress in everyone. Everything will stress you out because you're not lifting yourself out of a frequency where they're, you know, they matter as much and that their, their pain is your pain. When you follow your truest self, really you do, like actually do, because the universe doesn't follow what you announce. <laughs> it follows your actions. Right When you really say in a step of courage, like, I, I'm letting go of this and really let the freak out happen of a not you. R remember all the freak outs, if, it's a, if you follow a highest calling, everything that freaks out is not you. It's, it's a pattern that's going batshit to stay alive and keep you doing things at a seven or a six because it does that out of protection. But when you go, I'm following my heart and I don't know what's on the other side of it. I just, I can feel the frequency. By feeling something that feels expansive, this is how I know. Do I feel expanded with this decision or do I feel the familiar contraction that, I'm, that feels like home to my patterns? Like that's the decision maker. Does it feel like an opening with an outcome that I truly can't see what's on the other side of it? Right, I can't see what I just can feel an opening versus the the certainty of the familiarity of the contracting feeling. Right? Do I do I follow this thing in my soul that expands me, but all of my body goes, yeah, but and holy shit, and I'm scared because it's like you're about to skydive energetically, and everything that is scared of skydiving is going to get as loud as possible to stop you from doing it. But when you start doing it, your body rewires and it goes, okay, false childhood safety mechanism, you can go now. 
based on how you move. The body wires itself differently. But I think the body not only wires itself, I think the world wires itself around your move. Right? I, and even if I'm wrong, why not follow your highest as if that's the case? Why not go for it, even if it's totally wrong? But I, I'm watching as just so many miracles happen as I just follow what's true for me and let what's not true fall away. Let what, let's what's heavy fall away. Let, uh, you know, we try to keep the heavy going with the ego. It wants to keep the heavy going. I need that baggage and that familiarity because that feels like my childhood. But it's not what you are. So don't be scared to let the things fall away that, that are not calling your soul, that are in the realm of have to. Every time you do what you think you have to do, but it's not a calling have to, it's like a requirement, shame, have to, the world goes, okay, I'm going to make life really hard. I'm going to make it really heavy for you. I'm going to make you see that this have to way also doesn't work and doesn't bring in money anyway. I always say, is the way that you've been doing it that isn't following your heart making money? And like Linda said last night, actually no. So why does not following your heart get so much credit falsely while following your heart doesn't get any? It's just an unknown. And all those sentences like, yeah, but, or the money won't work or whatever, it's, it, it's inaccurate. You actually have all the evidence that staying in safety doesn't work, especially in this time. Because I want you to imagine whether you go up or not, the overall collective frequency is rising. So you're not able to play at a, like, it's like, imagine you're in advanced levels of the video game now. And like, it's faster and it's moving quicker, right? And so it's like, now it's really quick now. You got to move more intuitively to, to stay with the elevator that's just going whether you go or not. So if, if the elevator's moving quick and you grab a c convenient, familiar floor, right, it's just you're going to lose your hands because it's just it's moving too quick. And you've got to really follow your soul and move into more and more surrender and lose this I. It's really a false I that's, that's trying to stay alive by holding the baggage. That's who the I is. Can, can you feel in your body that the thing that we always talk about is like, why don't you let God do it and you just let go? So we're calling you the one that is choosing to let go or follow. But when you finally do let go and let this God take over, that you that was holding on dissolves. So there's more now you, right? Do you get what I'm saying? There's more this now you. And the one you were identifying as I actually wasn't I ever. Because the one that, that was the I that's deciding, do I do this or not? When you finally follow your soul and let this thing go, the one that was saying, yeah, but dies. So what you associate as an I is really a protective childhood mechanism. The I that you have is, is the yeah, but, or the, the shut up, don't say that, that's so stupid, or the over-apologizer or the comparer. That's what your I is associated to that you actually think I is the small pattern of stories in the past and protective mechanisms. But they can die and you'll still be here. And just to let you know, I'm really excited about our event coming up in June, June 20th through the 23rd, called The Big One. If this little riff excited you, why do you immerse yourself for four days in the truth of what you are? We've discovered that when we do an event, the next day is exponentially better than the first day. So we thought, what if we keep going and really keep connecting uninterrupted and go into a world that we can't come back from? If you want to join us at the Alex Theater in Glendale for the big one event, me and I'm going to have my guest friends, Aaron Abke and Kim DeRamo join me. We're going to do an insane four day event and see what unfolds from the infinite where you can't grab on to your old constructs anymore because you're in an environment that's celebrating the actual truth of what you are. And boy, will being around that cause you to not have the old story, the old limitation, the old addiction, and let those things fall out as we do deep meditations, dialogue, stuff that opens your heart 
different exercises. We're going to do so many different things. And once you're on day four, you will not be able to unsee what you just saw. And you will finally have an intention because you got a taste of that true you that will cause you to move intentions from how do I get the person to like me? How do I make the money? How do I build the business to I want that? What am I? I want to feel that. I want to know what I am. Join us for the big one. It's going to be insane and move into a place of oneness that you can't move back from and watch as a lot of the true essence of what is causing the pain in your heart falls away. I can't wait to see you there.